All right, today tearing into a Honda Rubicon 500. This is a 2004. What I wanted to show you today was a worn product that converts this uh, four-wheel drive four-wheeler into a two or four-wheel drive four-wheeler. So it's, a, it's an actual gearbox right here. I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to show you how to disassemble it, and I'm going to show you where you can get that. So make sure you check those links below. Uh, I just wanted to show you exactly what it was. It comes with a handle here. Uh, a knob that you pull to pull it out of four-wheel drive or engage the four-wheel drive and then it comes with this gear here. So I'm going to explain that whole process to you. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Uh, also, we've got hundreds of other videos on the Honda ATVs, so make sure and check those out on our channel. Subscribe to our channel and so you are notified when we come out with different videos. So thank you guys for watching. Stick with us as we tear into this on the Rubicon. Thanks. All right, I want to show you what it looked like here when it was actually on the four wheeler, and then I'm going to show you taking it off. But you can see there we've got this aluminum housing. It's got a worn sticker on there. It says 424 Select. So we've got this cable that wraps around. So it goes down there, slides right along that front prop shaft there, goes and it attaches. This one ended up attaching to the front rack of the four wheeler. And I'm not totally sure if it comes with a bracket to mount that to, if you're supposed to put that in the plastic. Uh, you'll be able to see that in the description of the item that I'm going to list below. Um, but they just had a metal bracket actually welded onto the frame. So there was no movement there and you were able to push and pull this knob here. It's gonna be hard to do that with one hand at this time, but that cable runs down, comes into this housing here, and then you've got your shaft that runs through here. Obviously, uh, this shaft is being able to be engaged and disengaged, so that's what this pull knob does here. It engages or disengages uh, this actual shaft in here. So you can see this is the stock coupling here, stock coupling on this side. You've got a different shaft set up here, but it's gonna fit into your Honda four-wheeler. I see there this coupling here is gonna fit several different years and models. I believe the 400s, the 450s, and obviously the 500s, and there'll be several others. So I know Warren makes this product for a handful of different Honda four-wheelers. Uh, it just makes it nice to be able to switch from four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive as opposed to keeping an all-time four. Not as many parts are getting worn out when you're in two-wheel drive. Also, uh, being able to steer, it's just a whole lot easier to steer a four-wheeler that's in two-wheel drive as opposed to four-wheel drive. So making that option selectable uh, is a huge benefit to this four-wheeler. All right, what I'm gonna try to do is remove this without having to remove the differential. So I'm gonna show you if that's gonna be possible or not. Obviously, uh, when you're going to install this, you're gonna just kind of do everything in reverse here. So these are couplings here and they're a slip joint so you can slide the shaft back and forth in there. You can see if we were to loosen these up, we should be able to take and slide these either direction a little bit. I don't know because of this uh, controller here or this, uh, this separator if we're still gonna be able to do that. So that's what I was gonna shoot a video on today is just uh, helping you guys know how to install this worn setup also how to remove it if you're needing to do that and all what that entails. If we do have to remove the differential, not a big deal. Uh, what I would do is actually just loosen up, I believe two different differential bolts or differential mounts, maybe three, and slide that differential all the way forward. We know at that point you're gonna be able to get this uh, assembly out of there. So we might just start off by doing that, but first I wanted to pull these boots off of here just to make sure we couldn't slip in there and get that done without uh, pulling that front differential. We've got a mount down here. This is, I don't know if this is standard either. I think they're gonna have some sort of system like this uh, from Warren there, uh, but but they've got a U-bolt on here that attached to the frame, and then we've got a bent piece of metal here. I'm gonna bet that the piece that they give you uh, with the kit is not gonna be a bent piece of metal like this. Maybe it is, I'll have that in the video description down below here, but. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this small bolt out of there. That way we can try to move that back and forth. All right, we have that bolt removed there. Uh, you can see there, this is actually, it looks like just a, a rubber strap here. So I'm not totally sure what that'll come with uh, from Warren. Uh, my guess is it'll be slightly different than that. Now you can actually take and spin this around. So I'm gonna take and pull these two boots off of here. So grab, uh, sometimes they'll stick and you gotta get kind of a flat screwdriver in there to. To loosen that up but you don't want to tear these you want to make sure that these are good going back together but go ahead and remove those at least off of one side 
and then uh, make sure this is at least loose. There's not very much room right here to pull this boot completely off. What I'm trying to do now is just seeing if there's movement back and forth, and there is. Just don't know if there's gonna be enough to completely remove this assembly. So not enough to move it back, not enough to move it forward either. So we are gonna to have to at least loosen that differential up. I doubt if we're gonna to have to remove it uh, to get this assembly off. So to do that, and you don't even have to remove drive shafts and stuff like that. We got a 12 millimeter bolt up front here, a couple more 12 millimeter bolts. And then up top, we've got, looks like a 14 and a 14. And then I don't, and then there's one down below here in the back. So we'll go ahead and remove those at this time. We have the front differential loosened up here. I want to show you one thing up top here on this top mount. Uh, you're going to have a bolt that goes through it coming in from the right hand side. And then you're going to have a spacer uh, that goes on there as well. So make sure you keep track of that. If you've got all your panels on here, your fenders, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to see that. So that spacer will sit in there right in between the, the, uh, the frame itself and the differential. So make sure you check that. Now we've got the front differential completely loosened up. What I'm going to do then is take uh, the drive shafts there and just pull that straight forward. And you can see there that allow this to come out of there. And as long as that's far enough forward, we might have to do a little more finagling to get that out. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be pretty close. And then you should be able to take and push it back just a little bit if you need to. Okay, so you can take and be very careful because this is aluminum, but you can take a little pry bar there and slide it back. That'll slide that shaft down into that coupling there. Then you're able just to take and kind of move that. Our differential is falling forward, so I might actually have somebody else hang on to this. That or just wedge something in there so it doesn't continue to fall back. Um, you can also take and kind of give it a little bit of a turn too. Uh, that might allow you to slide that shaft out of there. We give a little bit of space to that cable there so we're not kinking that at all. I'm just taking and pulling this coupling uh, out of this prop shaft here. Then you're able just to scoot that over just a little bit and that's going to be enough to pull this out. Now we can just take and wiggle this uh, worn assembly out of there. You might have to take a little pry bar and slide that out too. There we go and our boot's sticking on here. And now we have that assembly out of there. Make sure you take the cable with it so you're not breaking that cable. And then that's what the entire assembly looks like there. Now, if I was to take and pull that lever, um, pull this cable out or pull this knob out, uh, you, you'll be spinning one side but not the other. So that's what disengages in there uh, on this worn assembly here. So really good setup just again allows you to uh, kick it in and out of four wheel drive as needed. So if you guys have questions or comments, make sure you leave those in this, uh, the comment section below. If you've got uh, something that I can help you with, parts to order or special tools that we use uh, to remove this motor, remove the clutches or the flywheel, make sure you check those out in our description below. Again, if this video has been helpful, hit that subscribe button for me. Thanks again for watching.